Welcome to yet another video about being intentional, about making the kinds of choices and decisions in your life which allow you to become the best possible version of you. When we consider what I've just said, when we consider the sequence of events which leads us from a choice which is uh, essentially abstract most of the time to a decision which is a little bit more concrete, to an action which is tangible and visible because it, is, it leads to visible behavior, then when we consider, when we think, when we actually ask ourselves, what is it like to be intentional? What does it entail exactly? What is it in its totality so that, so that we can understand it better? Well, being intentional means knowing how to behave so that your best possible version of you, which means that you're actually becoming a better person. And the moment we consider that, a paradox arises naturally out of it because if we're becoming a better person, then we have to ask a better person according to whom. What is the yardstick we are using here in order to determine who is good and who is not? What is good and what is not? Consider that essentially the notion of good and bad is pretty relative. It depends on context every time and it depends on a variety of factors which are not always uh, consistent and a lot of times can probably be contradictory. So it is really a messy process with no clear cut answer and the whole thing is sort of in a sort of exists in a kind of gray cloud, which is what makes it so difficult. So you ask yourself, well, what is it like? What exactly must I do in order to become a better person? How would I even know if I'm a better person if we take as a uh, as dogma, as fact, if you like, that essentially no matter what you do, some people will like you, some people will love you, and some people will hate you. So taking people's external reactions as an indication of how good or bad you are is probably not the best way to decide if you're a good person or a bad person. That, however, doesn't mean there's no answer. It doesn't mean that there is not something you should be applying as a yardstick. Now, what I'm going to give you is something which I've worked out for myself, but obviously it has a broader application and other people are using it. So I'm not unique in any sense of the word. And it does actually work for me when I consider the consequences of my actions, not only to myself, but also to the people around me and the world at large in which we all live in. So what is a yardstick I use? Well, I actually use two things. The first thing which I consider, the first thing which I apply, is do as little damage as possible. Now, I know your definition of damage will probably be different to mine, and that's exactly the way it should be because we live in different contexts and have a different understanding of the world. Nevertheless, damage it is, and as long as you understand it and apply it, it is what it is. So, rule number one, if you want to be a better person, do as little damage as possible in your passage through life. And there you go. I've given you a broader context now in order to be, for you to be able to view better the actions and consequences of your um, life. Which now leads us to the second uh, guideline, which I apply and I hope you will be able to. And that says, leave only good memories behind. Now, obviously, your passage through life, as mine, is, is um, made up of a series of decisions and choices and actions. Those actions have consequences. Those consequences make themselves felt. So we all do have an impact, not just on ourselves, but also in the world around us. That impact does cause some kind of impression, which can be construed as damage to some extent by others and perhaps even by ourselves. So if we limit that, this is good. Then if we can create good memories for others and for ourselves, then that gives us a litmus test, that gives us a, a baseline, if you like, to actually be able to gauge whether our passage through life is good or not. So if we're accumulating more bad memories than good ones, perhaps we're creating a little bit more friction than we should, perhaps we're a little bit more aggressive than we should, perhaps we are a little bit less agreeable than we should. Which means we should reconsider some of our approach to some things. And now I'm leaving this particular element a little bit vague because I fully understand that your situation is different to mine and everybody else is going to be equally different to ours.
Those two things. Let's recap. In our journey through life, number one, do as little damage as possible. Number, number two, strive to leave only good memories behind. Now, if you apply these two consistently, if you apply these two things as a filter or a prism through which you can actually see your actions, then I'm willing to bet that you're well on your way to becoming a better person than the person you are right now. I really hope this helps. Keep your emails coming. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Don't forget to check out the links in the description box below. There are more links to a lot of uh, deeper things of, on the things we've just discussed. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for thinking about this. Thank you for being thoughtful. Take care. Love you all.